So how do you go about making the most ridiculous, scientifically illiterate challenge on the internet? Well, firstly, you need to find the two most scientifically illiterate people, starting with this man, Nathan Thompson, who believes that brain training can make your feet grow. So, my, man, my feet, my feet are getting bigger. I grew four shoe sizes since I've started this program. And then find someone like this guy who knows what a spirit level looks like. So this is what they call a level. But who actually thinks it's a mobile phone. I'll show you what I mean. Hello? Yeah. What is it you want to see? We want to see the physics of water finding and maintaining level being superseded by a theory called gravity. Um, no, sorry, mate. I can't hear you. Something, uh... Something mustn't be working right. Uh, anyway, together they have made the most farcical flat earth video that I have ever seen. <clears throat> yeah, I know, sorry Ranty, but I am even including you in that. I don't think even you at this point could say anything that's more ridiculous than what you're about to witness. It appears to be a second moon um, behind the, the full moon. Um, actually Ranty, that's not a bad effort. Anyway, Nathan Thompson and Flat Earth Millionaire have decided to offer $200,000 to anybody that can complete three of their scientifically illiterate challenges. Uh, now, we all know Nathan Thompson. He's a Flat Earther famous for harassing scientists wherever he goes and calling them a liar. Uh, most famously in this example. Well, I just got kicked out of Starbucks for asking NASA employee questions because he's lying. And most irritatingly in this example. So if you're lying to kids, the Bible says you should go kill yourself. Did you know that? Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, Nathan Thompson is also famous for failing spectacularly hard whenever his own understanding of science is put to the test. Like the time when I was debating him about our observations of Polaris and how they disprove a flat Earth. Um, now, in this debate, I asked Nathan Thompson to explain to me how he would calculate the length of a side of a triangle. Pretty much no more than high school trigonometry. Um, now, despite the answer being on the screen, this is what Nathan Thompson said. How would you calculate it? I mean, it, so so your argument is that the north, I, you know, I'm, I personally can't calculate that. I, I don't work in kilometers. I normally work in miles. Yeah, apparently flat earth trigonometry doesn't work if the numbers are given in kilometers and not miles, even if the answer is on the screen. Although, to be fair to him, uh, I did ask him how you'd work it out, not what the answer was. But still, it was funny anyway. Um, now, that's Nathan Thompson. Let's meet flat earth millionaire and find out how he got involved in all of this. Um, keep your eye out on the subtitles. Um, how did this come about? Yeah, well, back in uh, late 2014, um, I stumbled across some uh, early videos from Math Powerland, and uh, within you know 30, 45 minutes, I, I knew that uh, the, the photos from space of Earth were uh, were faked. I knew that uh, water doesn't stick to the bottom of a spinning ball; it's never been replicated. So I've been in the movement for quite some time. Uh, so there we have it. The scene is set. Two flat earthers. Three stupid challenges and two hundred thousand dollars. Hello. Hello, it's me. Look, just get on with it and introduce the first challenge, will you? Yeah, that's what I was just about to do. Mm -hmm. Let's find out about challenge one. But, what does uh, the challenge consist of? The, the challenge. There's three main parts. Uh, we want to see uh, replication using the scientific method. You know, observing, measuring, and repeating water sticking to a, a ball. You know, it didn't even have to be spinning. We just want to see water conforming to the exterior of a ball, okay, mm -hmm. without it dropping and dripping out, off the bottom and sides. Now, I have heard some ridiculous things from flat earthers. Like the time when I was arguing with a woman um, who confused the word fusion, as in nuclear fusion, with the word fizzy. Well, no. if it's fusion, isn't that just bubbles of air in water? Or when this flat earther told me water was alive. I believe water is sentient. But this first challenge really takes a biscuit and we all know why. What they are asking us to do is perform an act that would actually disprove gravity as we know it. So my take on it is simple. Either number one, you are that academically weak that you fail to grasp the simple concept that the gravitational pull of a ball on Earth will never overcome the gravitational pull of the Earth. Or B, you do understand that, in which case you are being deliberately dishonest. So what is it? Are you A, academically weak? Or B, just massively dishonest. However, here's challenge one completed for you anyway, and I will wait for the inevitable accusations of how all these videos are fake. Well, we're definitely scientifically illiterate, I'll give you that. Anyway, can we move on to the next one now, please? Okay, well, let's see if you actually can move on to the next point. You see, we've done challenge one, we know there are three, so what number comes next? 
Beautiful. Okay, so we want to see that. Have to we, be a big we, ball. Yeah, because of gravity. Absolutely, because right. of gravity. This okay. theory that supersedes the physics of water, finding and maintaining level. Yeah. Okay, it's that a supersedes theory. Supersedes the theory or law of thermodynamics. Ther yeah. The, the that's a gas. Yeah. Would escape into the vacuum. That's the that's the third. All uh, right. That's the third challenge is uh, replicate using the scientific method, uh, showing where um, a vacuum or zero pressure can exist next to a pressurized system. So in typical flat earth fashion, after challenge one comes challenge three. Um, I really can't help but think that these guys might really have benefited from rewatching Mark Sargent's flat earth maths masterclass from before Christmas. One, two, three. So anyway, back to the challenge. This whole vacuum of space next to our atmosphere thing is something that a whole lot of flat earthers seem to struggle with. They seem to think somehow it violates the second law of thermodynamics. A bit like this guy here. All right, sweet cheeks, let's go. Uh, the vacuum of space is 10 to the negative 17 tor. That, my friend, is some serious pressure. But it's not, is it? It's almost no pressure at all. It's literally nearly zero pressure. Watch this next sentence next to a gas and uh, yeah I'll not even bother finishing that one off because I'll probably got it wrong anyway just we'll just leave it at that um, and then entropy would happen with the second law of thermodynamics so I literally have no idea what I'm talking about with entropy it either increases or decreases it just just doesn't just happen does it anyway here we go gas is not a negative pressure bloody hell I got one right I think um, a vacuum is um, yeah not absolute negative though uh, someone's confused me along the line there with that oh bollocks so given the fact that there's probably more chance of this little finger winning the men's 4x400 meter relay at the next Olympics than there is of Nathan Thompson or Flat Earth Millionaire actually explaining what the second law of thermodynamics is, I thought I'd challenge myself to see if I can explain inside 30 seconds a little bit about thermodynamics, entropy and how our atmosphere is involved in that. <sighs> Absolutely can't wait. Start the clock. The second law of thermodynamics says that in a closed system, when energy changes occur, entropy must increase. And at a very basic level, what that means is the energy just gets spread out a little bit more. Now, the Earth isn't a closed system, but still, let's crack on anyway. Here's the sun. When energy from the sun is absorbed by Earth, it is re-emitted, but it's re-emitted as a higher number of lower energy photons. So therefore, the energy is being spread out, entropy is increasing. And this process incre uh, repeats itself as energy travels through the atmosphere from one layer to the next, absorbing and then re-emitting the energy as a higher number of photons. By the time the gas particles get to what we would call the edge of space, they have done so much work against gravity and radiated off so much heat that they don't have any energy left to cause any sort of significant pressure. Amazing. Thank you. So, what that means is, as we all knew anyway, there is no high pressure next to the vacuum of space. It is a gradient that fades off to zero, and that in no way, shape, or form contradicts anything to do with thermodynamics or entropy. <laughs> Give us a second. Hello? Oh, you think you're so smart, but we don't even need to understand science to say it's rubbish. We're flat earthers. Anyway, let's see if that little explanation has helped out our commenter from before, shall we? No, I don't think it has helped. In fact, I think I'm even more of a confused mess now. Look, listen to this. Uh, the container with gas pressure, 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 pressure. I think you missed the word pressure. Yeah, see what I mean? Um, then this is a good one. The put a vacuum doesn't suck or have pressure. That's why a space, not space, that's why a space is 10 to the negative 17th tor. Spoke wrong. Uh, if it's actually nothing, they should just say it's zero. See what I mean? I'm like, I'm putting words together, but screw the order. That doesn't matter. This next bit's good too. Uh, even the strength from one tor, what kind of tor is that? Uh, and atmospheric pressure will crush a rail car, right? So that will crush a rail car, but that isn't strong because you can crush a rail card just, just by looking at it. Oh, I really hope Conspiracy Cats doesn't turn this comment into a song and, you know, put it at the end of this video. Uh, I guess that didn't help him. Um, anyway, somebody else who still doesn't understand the second law of thermodynamics is Nathan Thompson. Now, you think somebody who was involved in a challenge where $200,000 were on the line and the challenge was claiming that a violation of the second law of thermodynamics would have to happen for us to have an atmosphere next to space. You'd think somebody like that would have a basic understanding of what the second law of thermodynamics was. So I popped onto Nathan Thompson's channel while he was live streaming a couple of days ago, and I asked him. Shut up before I block you. You're boring and annoying and scientifically illiterate. So in other words, no, he's, uh, he's still pretty clueless. Um, but that didn't stop me from continuing to ask. 
Conspiracy Cat says, what's the second law of thermodynamics? Well, according to M. Stone, who got toe-tagged on Nathan Oakley's channel the other day, it's the law that proves space is fake. Uh, Conspiracy Cats just repeats himself like a broken record. So, Conspiracy Cats, adios, muchacho. Oh, Conspiracy Cats came back on his other channel to get blocked from that channel. How dumb. What a loser. How did the Conspiracy Cat, wow, back on a third channel, asking the same question? Can you explain the second law of thermodynamics? Did I not explain that? There he is, Conspiracy Cat's patron. Can you explain the second law of thermodynamics? What? That's the fifth one. Fifth channel. What a clown show. So my take on this challenge is simple. You are either A, so scientifically illiterate and academically weak that you just can't understand that there is no high pressure next to a vacuum of space and it is in fact a pressure gradient that fades off to zero. Or B, you do understand that, and for some reason, when you're asking to show a high pressure next to a vacuum, you are being deliberately dishonest. So which one is it? Are you A, massively academically and scientifically illiterate? Or B, hugely dishonest? Anyway, just to highlight how easy it is to demonstrate a pressure gradient, here's a bag of crisps at different altitudes. So what was the final challenge? I want to see where sea level, where the physics of water finding and maintaining level, go from sea level being level and flat, a flat surface, to convex. We want to see where sea level turns to sea curve, okay? Right, well I can help with that. Take your mobile phone and hold it up to the horizon. Uh, okay, you mean, what, just, just like that, yeah? Yeah, well done. Now, go to the seaside and do that and take a picture. Uh, these pictures, by the way, are from the Metabunk website and I've linked that website in the description. Please check it out. There is so much flat earth destroying stuff on there. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, anyway, once you've taken that photograph, properly analyze it. Zoom in a little bit, maybe compress it left to right a bit, and you'll see that the spirit level remains flat, but the curve of the ocean is more than visible. So challenge one and challenge three completed. Challenge two totally invalidated due to it being more stupid than even this. What? Are these flames defying gravity nice? by going up? So I will claim my money now, but I might let you keep it if. Well, if you decide to spend it on a ticket on one of the upcoming Virgin Galactic space missions. You see, from there, you'll be able to see and film the curvature of Earth yourself. You see, it's all well and good to brag that you've got all this money to throw around, and it's all well and good to claim that you're searching for the truth about the shape of the Earth. But why don't you put the two together? What is stopping? Think about it. What is actually stopping you from buying a ticket with the same amount of money you've put up for this challenge to do something like that? What is actually stopping you? Nothing is stopping you. But I wonder if you'll do it. No. No. Exactly. Anyway, uh, remember that comment from before? Yeah, I think he means this one. Well, to play us out, the Flat Earth community and I have been working together to turn it into something a little more beautiful. Enjoy. The container with gas pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. I think you missed the word pressure. So here it is again. Press, press, pressure. Put a vacuum doesn't suck. Beautiful. Cheers. I thought it was too high for me, but I might have just got away with it. Thank goodness. Yeah, I know. Anyway, now let's just say something dumb about space. This weight is space weight. Not that dumb. If it's actually... Nothing. They should just say it's... Zero. What a team effort. You guys are amazing. You're the man, Conspiracy Cats. Oh, thanks. I'm the man. I, I like that. Black man or a white man. Yeah, one of those two. Anyway. Yeah, you're right. Let's Let's crack on with it. Atmospheric pressure will crush a rail car But that's not strong cause you can crush a rail car Shut up before I block you You're boring and annoying and scientifically illiterate But you are Superman Superman Well done boys Superman oh, Alright, don't get carried away, you can't just throw it in any old time Anyway, I've had enough of this Over to you Nathan Roberts, you finish it off do, 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 do. <sighs> Lovely jubbly.